What's up you guys? Welcome back to the Average Joe on Money Financial Channel and in this video we are talking about Fidelity Index Funds. I know it's been a long time since I've talked about Fidelity Index Funds so I'm generally a Vanguard kind of guy especially when it comes to their exchange traded funds. But as I've talked about in previous videos, you know, Fidelity is a real major player in the indexed mutual fund space. And in this video, I want to break down for the, the complete beginner out there. You're just starting to invest. You're ready to put your money to work uh, and have your money work for you. And you want to pick a Fidelity index. You want to pick Fidelity index funds. How do you do it? Well, I'm going to go through it for you here comprehensively in this video. So if you're brand new to investing, you're brand new to Fidelity, you're even better, you're brand new to indexed index funds, then make sure you stick around all the way to the end of this video. Guys, it's going to be comprehensive. We're going to walk through Fidelity's website, look at the options for investing. And if you guys have any questions or concerns throughout, throw them in the comments below and I will make sure to answer every single question. Before we get started here on the computer screen, guys, I just want to make sure everyone is clear with what a mutual fund actually is. So a mutual fund is an investment product from an investment company like Fidelity, Vanguard, Schwab, many of them out there. Uh, and what they do is they allow and many investors to pool their money together. The average Joes out there, along with the people who have a lot of money, they allow them to pool their money together to purchase a set type of investment. Could be stocks, could be bonds, could be many different types of things. Could be a combination of them actually. And what that does, when you pool large amounts of investors and money together, it allows for diversification and lower costs and lower fees. And then and many times you can pair that with a money manager to help make and form decisions on behalf of the investors. That's your average mutual fund. The, the problem with a mutual fund though, is that many mutual funds have really high expense ratios or how much money that the investment company charges investors to manage it on their behalf. And mutual funds can still make you money to be clear, um, but there's an easier way to do it and that is called index funds. So an index fund is, to be clear, a type of mutual fund, um, but it doesn't have an active an aggressive money manager. Instead of trying, instead of having somebody being paid to not only manage the funds, but also to to uh, you know strategically pick stocks that they think are going to do well. Uh, instead, with an index fund, you have a very clear objective to match a specific index. And when I say index, what I mean is a group of stocks. For example, the S&P 500 is an index of the 500 largest US companies. Um, then you've got the NASDAQ composite index. You've got the Dow Jones Industrial Average. These are all indexes of a specific set of stocks. So instead of trying to beat the uh, S&P 500, instead of trying to beat the Dow Jones set of stocks, instead with an index fund, you're just trying to match the index. Just invest your money in exactly whatever is in the index and then you match that performance as well. And when you do this with index funds, you're able to then achieve your goals and objectives much more simplistically, much more um, steadily and it costs a lot less money with the respect to the expense ratios. You know, oftentimes with actively managed funds or when you have a money manager that's trying to make buy and sell decisions to beat the index, those expense ratios can be north of 0.5%, 1%, sometimes even as high as 1.5 or 2% every single year based on how much money you've invested. However, with an index fund, especially with indexed mutual funds from Fidelity and others, you can invest and the expense ratio is 0.015%, 0.02%, which is such a small amount of money. I mean, we're talking at a, at a 0.015% expense ratio. We're talking 15 cents for every thousand dollars invested. You just can't beat that level of expense ratios. Well, technically you can. You can do it with 0% expense ratios. We'll get there in a second. With indexed mutual funds, you have the ability to invest at a really low cost and still meet your financial objectives because you're just matching the market and we know that the market over the long term is going to go up. Over time, you know, it might bounce around a little bit, uh, go up a little bit, down, up, but over the long term, when you smooth it out, it goes up. So how does it all tie into Fidelity and specifically Fidelity index funds? I'm glad you asked. Without further delay here, let's go ahead and jump onto my computer screen. Let me show you how to navigate the Fidelity website and more importantly, how to pick Fidelity index funds to help you meet your investing and your financial objectives. All right, guys, so we're here on my computer screen. We're in the Fidelity website. 
Uh, and what I want to show you guys is when you have your own Fidelity brokerage account or IRA or Roth IRA account, uh, you have the ability to do quite a bit of research and have a, a variety of options when it comes to Fidelity index funds. Um, and again, when I say index funds, I'm talking about indexed mutual funds. Now, so we're here on the Fidelity website and what you can do here is we can pop over to news and research. Okay, and we can go over to mutual funds. And this is gonna give us access to the mutual funds research page. Now, it's really easy to get overwhelmed here. So another way to take care of it is, instead you can go to fund strategies, the second tab over. They have their zero minimum investment funds, they have top rated funds, category leaders, sectors, um, income generation, high rated funds. Um, and there's a few things I wanna talk about here. First off, I wanna talk about the index funds tab here. So you click on index funds and that's gonna lead uh, you down to 407 different indexed mutual funds. Not just Fidelity here. So if we just scroll down here, you'll see that you've got some Fidelity options up here and then we've got all these other ones down here. Now the reason why they're coded a little bit different here is because Fidelity doesn't necessarily like you as their customer to go and buy indexed mutual funds from another company. Another a big competitor for Fidelity is Vanguard. So just for an example here, if I scroll down here to Vanguard, Let's see here, the Vanguard Growth Index Fund, okay? So you click on that one. You're gonna notice that it does have an expense ratio, 0.05%, but you'll also notice, oh, look at that sucker right there, a $75 transaction fee um, to buy indexed mutual funds from a company other than Fidelity. Um, and the good news for you is that with Fidelity, you're gonna be able to meet all your objectives and you would not, you don't get charged any type of transaction fee like that to buy Fidelity funds as long as you're a Fidelity customer. Now, if you really, really, really wanna buy a non-Fidelity index fund, you can actually do it for free by purchasing an exchange traded fund from another company such as Vanguard or Schwab or any other company like that. Um, but we don't have to do that here. We're talking about indexed mutual funds specifically right now. So we've got options here by clicking on index funds, which you can also do, you see there's 407 different funds, but really when we wanna exclude those transaction fees, what we really wanna do is click on Fidelity funds only. So now we've limited it to 61 different funds. And you'll notice that we've got all these options, but you also got over here the expense ratios. We want to, and, and I'm, I'm here to tell you that you can absolutely meet your objectives with really, really low expense ratios. So let's go ahead and sort by the lowest expense ratios. Okay, we'll do that. The highest ones are 0.3%. That's really high for an index fund. Um, and you'll notice here that Fidelity has four different options here that have a 0% expense ratio, meaning it costs nothing to buy the index fund, and even better, it costs nothing to own it on an annual basis, whereas many different indexed mutual funds will charge you a nominal fee, very small, 0 0.01, 0 0.02, 0 0.03, really small amounts to own the fund on a recurring basis. That's not the case here with um, these four different what are called Fidelity Zero indexed mutual funds. So we've got the Fidelity Zero extended market, which I'm actually not that big of a fan of. We've got the Fidelity Zero international index fund, the Fidelity Zero large cap, which is very similar to the S&P 500. And then we've got the Fidelity Zero total market index fund. So really what I wanna talk about and highlight here, there's lots of different options available, um, but I really wanna talk about two different index funds that you're probably gonna be something right up your alley if you're a new investor looking to grow over the long term. If you're looking for income, here soon, if you're looking to retire soon, then this is not the conversation for you. This is not the type of video for you. But what I wanna highlight here is the Fidelity 500 index fund. As you can see here, FXAIX is the ticker symbol. And I also wanna talk about the Fidelity Total Market Index Fund, FSKAX. Now, so first off, I'll talk about this one here, the Fidelity 500 Index Fund. A great option for brand new investors is to model the S&P 500, which as we know is the top 500 um, US companies that meet the criteria for the index. So companies that you know of, like Apple and Amazon, Google, Facebook, Visa, MasterCard, um, these are all companies that are part of the S&P 500 index. So if you're here on Fidelity's website and you click on the Fidelity 500 index fund just to learn a little bit more about it, you'll see here we've got performance over here, we've got some of the details here, the expense ratio, which is really low, 0.03%. 
0.015%, which is a market leader with respect to S&P 500 index funds. I mean, even Vanguard's index fund, I think, for the S&P 500, um, F, uh, no, VFIAX is 0.04%. The ETF is 0.03%, but point is both of those are higher than Fidelity's indexed mutual fund here. You scroll down here, we've got some other things here. We've got the turnover rate, the minimum to invest, meaning there's no required minimum to invest with the S&P 500 index fund. You can start with $0 and you can put in, you know, 20, 30, $50 a week, a month, whatever you're able to do right now, you can start with that with Fidelity. There's no minimums, which is different than Vanguard. Vanguard does have some minimums you would have to address. Um, but you'll also see the hypothetical growth of $10,000 over a specific period of time. And you can see that um, this pretty much matches the index. We scroll down further here, we've got the top 10 holdings and it's gonna be what's called a cap weighted index. Many of the index mutual funds are cap weighted meaning that the largest companies in the index, think Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, the largest companies in the index are gonna get the most weighting in the index. More money will be funneled to those companies as opposed to your small uh, mom and pop or the, the smallest companies in the index will get a very small fraction of the investment dollars going into it. That's the idea that you continue to buy the companies that are performing the best and you still invest a little bit but not a lot in the companies that are growing at a lower level. If you want to deep dive this fund, you can come in here, look at the performance and risk, the composition, it'll tell you the breakdown here. Um, it'll show you the breakdown based on different market sectors. The information technology sector is 28% of the fund, healthcare, consumer discretionary. And then if you go down here, you'll see here the top 10 holdings represent 27.86% of the index. Um, and you've got like Apple, Microsoft, Google, like these big companies represent a significant portion of the index. You'll see here when we look at the, the performance that year to date, even though we have COVID that has affected us. Despite COVID happening, your money would still have been higher now. Your your account balance would be higher now than it was at the beginning of the year. 6.54% year-to-date growth. Um, one year return is 15%, three years, 12%, five years, 14%, and over the last 10 years, a 13% return. Excellent. And this is with an index fund. This is not where you're day trading, where you are constantly looking at your balances. When you are a brand new investor, you're looking to invest in index funds, you're looking to put your money away, set it and forget it. And you can do that with an index mutual fund. So if you buy FXAIX, or if you buy FSKAX, the total market fund, which is a little bit different, but we'll get to that in a second. You can just set that money away and not even look at it because your money is diversified across hundreds of different of the top American companies out there. Another option here, instead of the Fidelity 500 index fund, you can buy the Fidelity Total Market Index Fund, FSKAX. A very similar approach here. Instead of buying just the top, the, the 500 companies that are in the S&P 500, instead, the thought process is let's buy the whole market. Not just the top 500 companies, let's buy everything. Um, and it's got an expense ratio that's still the same, 0.015%, which is just ludicrous how little it costs to own this index fund. And again, $0 minimum to invest. Uh, it's been open since uh, 2011, this index fund. You can see the top 10 holdings are very similar to the S&P 500 index fund because it's a cap weighted fund. So even though they're buying the entire index, even though they're buying 3,438 different stocks in this index, the top weighted ones are still the ones that get the most investment dollars, meaning that in many cases, the, the total market and the S&P 500 index fund are going to almost replicate each other with respect to how they perform over time. Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, Facebook, these companies, Google, are gonna be almost in the exact same positions and almost the exact same weightings and then further down over the thousands of other stocks that Fidelity owns, you get a small little bit of the entire stock market. And that's the idea here. You're spreading your money, getting a little bit more diversification than you would, you would get with the S&P 500. And as as a brand new investor, guys, you come in here, you buy a Fidelity indexed mutual fund. Uh, you can just set it and forget it. Just, just invest in the S&P 500 or just invest in the total market index fund. Just set your money away and let it grow over time. If you want to get uh, flashy a little bit with doing this, you can buy 
uh, other aspects of the index. You can buy like um, the mid cap index fund or you can buy the small cap index fund and just kind of layer that in with the 500 of the total market just to give yourself exposure to smaller companies in the index which tend to historically grow at a faster rate than the largest companies in the United States. Um, but you don't have to do that. You can keep it very simple, especially if you're a brand new investor. You can just buy the S&P 500 or the total market and just set it and forget it and keep investing on a recurring basis. So let's talk about this here. Let's say you want to buy the Fidelity Total Market Index Fund. You come in here to buy the index fund. You come in here, you can buy with a set dollar amount. You don't have to worry about buying whole shares. You can just say, you know what, I want to start by buying $500 worth, uh, investing $500 into this index mutual fund. And you could also set up recurring deposits. One of the best parts about buying Fidelity Index Mutual Funds is you have the ability to set up a recurring investment investment into this index fund. So let's say you want to buy the S&P 500. Well, you come in here, you buy the S&P 500, and you can set up a recurring transfer and say that every, let's say two weeks, I want to invest $500 in this fund, or every month I want to invest $250. You can set it and forget it and have the automatic withdrawals coming from your bank account. In some cases, you can even do direct deposits directly from your paycheck invested into your Fidelity Roth IRA, IRA account. Um, and it's just set it and forget it and you don't have to worry about it. You don't have to worry about the ups and downs of the stock market. You just continue investing every single day, which is known as dollar cost averaging. Just a quick definition here. Dollar cost averaging is when, no matter what's happening, you continue to invest over time into the same fund. Fund. And what happens is when the fund is a higher cost, well, then you invest less money. And when it goes down in value, which is a great time to buy index funds or any type of investment for that matter, you are investing more shares at a lower amount, which means over time it smooths out. You are investing efficiently uh, for your future retirement. I know that I mentioned here the S&P 500 um, FXAIX and the Fidelity Total Market Fund FSKAX, but I also would be remiss if I didn't talk about Fidelity Zero funds. Now, um, like I said, Fidelity Zero has 0% 0 expense ratio, meaning that it costs you nothing to buy, nothing to continue to own over time. These investments, which is just crazy. Um, and with that, you can, like I show here, you've got four different Fidelity Zero funds. The, um, the extended market, I'm actually not a big fan of that one, but the total market and the large cap, the large cap is essentially the S&P 500, but they don't name it that because then they'd have to pay a lot of money to Standard & Poor's or S&P for the naming and the licensing rights. So think of the large cap index fund as the S&P 500. So if you prefer, these are new funds. They don't have a big track record of matching the market, but they've done a pretty good job so far. So if you wanted to invest for zero dollars with respect to any fees or expenses, you can totally buy the Fidelity Zero Large Cap Index Fund, or you can buy the Fidelity Zero Total Market Index Fund. Um, one quick note here though with these two funds, they pay annual dividends instead of quarterly dividends like the other two standard Fidelity Index Funds do. Not a big deal, especially if you're investing long term for growth as opposed for any type of income on a recurring basis. So with Fidelity Index Funds, you have so many options here, but the ones that make the most sense for the complete beginner out there, the average average Joe is to just invest in the S&P 500 or the total market. And like I'm showing here, we've got the Fidelity Zero funds here as well if you want to take advantage of zero expenses. Fidelity has a great platform. They have great investments for the average Joe to grow their money over time in their retirement accounts or if they're potentially interested in investing in a general brokerage account. Let me know guys if you have any questions or concerns. Leave your two cents in the comments below. Hopefully you found some value out of this video video here. For the average Joe investor, it doesn't get much better than low cost, potentially even zero cost, fidelity indexed mutual funds. Make sure to leave your two cents in the comments below. That's all I got for you guys. Have a great rest of your day and please continue during this pandemic to stay healthy, both physically and financially. Have a good one.